The one feeble little silver lining of the Dobbs decision, the one that overturned Roe versus Wade, is the way that it's forced the mainstream media to reckon with a lot of the shit we've been warning you about for years. Like we've been talking for damn near a decade on this show about the dangers of Catholic hospitals choosing religious rules over secular needs. One of the most off-cited statistics on this show is the fact that about one hospital bed in six in this country is in a hospital that's controlled by the Catholic Church. Now, if this was just a matter of ownership, it would be kind of bigoted for me to even point that out, but it isn't. The standard of care is different in Catholic hospitals. They all but universally refuse to do abortions regardless of the level of medical need. Miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy, get fucked. They'll refer you to the next hospital over, which for most of the country probably isn't in the same town and may very well also be a Catholic hospital. But it's far worse than just that. They also generally ban all contraceptive surgeries. They often won't even let their doctors give out or prescribe birth control. Hell, the Catholic Conference of Bishops, which oversees all Catholic hospitals in the country, forbids even referring patients to another facility for contraception. Well, the good news, to the extent that there can be good news buried in this, is that more people are starting to notice The Washington Post did a recent expose about the problem, and that's gained a lot more traction than pieces like this normally garner. I know because I've been screaming from the rooftops about this problem for years, and the only other voice I've ever heard on the subject is my echo. Advocacy groups are finally starting to make their way into mainstream outlets and point out shit like how unlikely it is that a patient knows what religion their goddamn hospital is. Hell, there's even some low-level noise about passing laws restricting their rights to stay so goddamn opaque about all this shit. Nobody's yet going as far as proposing laws that would make them just provide all the goddamn legal medical shit the doctor thinks they should provide. I mean, it's not like men are being regularly denied important medical care, but it's a start. And look, if you want to understand the scope and depth of this problem, you really need to focus on the low regard that Catholics have for women in general. I mean, they're one of the few remaining religious holdouts that ban women from basically any role of leadership at all. So that gives you a clue. But another stark reminder showed up in my inbox this week as well. It came in the form of a Catholic podcaster advising women in abusive relationships to stay put so that they could do their part to bring their abuser to salvation. Now, this story is actually meta-misogyny. It starts with a TikTok star going on some sexist-ass rant about how he'd never pay child support if his wife ran off on him with his kid. Well, Adrian Fonseca of the Catholic Conversations podcast took issue with that, but he took the wrong issue. In his mind, the real problem was that the women run off in the first place. And as part of his justification, he opined, quote, if a wife has a husband who is a deadbeat husband, who's not making money for their family, who's even abusive, I'm just going to say it because it's true and people will freak out, but it's true. And then, of course, because religious people can never make a direct point, even if they just said, I'm just going to say it as a lead. And he starts talking about saints that were abused and points out that, quote, they stayed and endured the abuse. They offered up those sufferings for the salvation of souls, but most primarily for the salvation of souls for their husband, end quote. So there you have it. The real victim when a husband abuses his wife is the husband's soul. And the same mindset that informs that kind of demonic sexism is also making medical decisions for women against their will. And on that happy note, I'll hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.